This is Contestants Not Appearing on Stage, a weekly podcast for game show enthusiasts. Episode number 19, Game Show Grindhouse. Recorded April 30th, 2016. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Contestants Not Appearing on Stage. Thank you for joining us. My name is Torgo. Let's find out who my co-hosts are this week. Hi, I'm Jordan, a.k.a. Unique Perspective, and this podcast is going to be longer than a blank. Hi, my name is Adam, Road Geek Adam, and I empathize Jordan's aging. Hi, my name is Tristan, a.k.a. Tris, and I'm hoping I can get atop the pyramid faster than 60 seconds. Hi, my name is Jason, a.k.a. JJ, and while I'm not Nick, I'll certainly try. (laughs) (laughs) Best intro ever. Apparently, Candle Jack will be joining us this episode, from what I understand. (laughs) Not quite Randy, but it'll have to do. We have a lot to talk about these because we've had a lot that occurred the last two weeks. So we're going to start it off with The Price is Right and the Earth Day quote-unquote special that occurred on the 22nd of April, last Friday. I say quote-unquote special because it wasn't really a special. In the past, mm-hmm. they've gone all out for Earth Day, having Earth Day specials. A couple years back, Ed Begley Jr. came out and promo- uh, presented the showcases. But this year, they really scaled it back, only really mentioning Earth Day just kind of as an aside before George would bring a contestant on down, having more subtle, quote-unquote, greener items up for bid, and then really having Earth Day showcases, which was a stretch. I don't think any of the vehicles offered that day were hybrid vehicles. So the first question I guess I want to bring up is, why would they scale back the Earth Day special of all things, especially when the show has made it a point to emphasize that in years past? Well, I mean, I feel like the direction we've been going in with specials lately on Price is Right is with days like Earth Day that are somewhat known but not considered major holidays like earth day groundhog day leap day they've been going with the semi-special direction this season and you know how in the past we've talked about how that i think there's only or how we think there's only so much we could do for say april fools i really feel that for earth day so i kind of feel like maybe they just didn't have any fuel left in the tank and just sort of is that supposed to be a pun did- <laughs> Actually, no, no, not at all. But I'm like, isn't no, that the but, point of Earth Day? <laughs> so I guess, but but no, I just kind of feel like maybe there's only so much they can do with Earth Day. We talked about this last episode, but even something like the cliffhanger special, where we didn't think that was very special, but at least they did something more than just showcases, and that wasn't even a major event. I mean, you know what you're getting for Earth Day. Just like April Fool's Day, like I said, it's it's about saving the Earth. And, you know, for this particular holiday, it isn't really about what you can do to make it different. Because the same message is going to be said over and over again. Uh, I feel that perhaps maybe this year, perhaps Mike decided that he wanted to focus more on Let's Make a Deal. Because they are the ones who had a really drawn out earth day special that uh, went across the uh length of the entire show so maybe he decided to focus his attention and energy on that than on price and just as an aside earth day falls on a weekend next year so we might not even get an earth day special next year i'm crying about it right now yeah but i wonder (laughs) if they're gonna have it on the friday before or the monday after i doubt they will honestly also, how much of this can we just chuck up to budget? I mean, the last couple of specials haven't all exactly had all these amazing prizes. Right, but the thing is, is that these other specials existed, like the Cliffhanger special, which is tiny. But we, have, we haven't really had a Pi Day special before. We haven't really had a Leap Day or, or Groundhog Day quote-unquote special before. So I'm not sure the budget argument is holding water when they're having these sporadic mini holiday specials in the first place. So that's the Earth Day special again. As we always say, leave a comment below. Let us know what you think about it. Now, moving to this past week, before we go ahead 
and talk about all the stuff that we know was going to happen. Let's talk about something that happened this past week. Kind of an uneventful week, really. But Thursday's show brought up an interesting series of events. The first item up for bids. I don't remember what James O'Halloran was modeling. The point is he modeled it without a shirt on. So it was something that had to do with like hot tub or scuba gear or something along those lines. Underwater vehicle. Underwater vehicle, which is pretty much just like a leaf blower with a propeller <laughs> attached to it right? for all intents and purposes. But that's not the point. James appeared without a shirt, as they like to do with James with hot tubs and spas and all that good stuff. And Drew made the aside, as he tends to do, but like, oh, look, James forgot his shirt today. If you watch the show often or every day like we do, you get a little bit tired of it. You could make the argument that it is male model objectification. And yeah, I know it's a counterpoint in a way to how female models are objectified by many people online and a lot of the viewers. And if you, you know, you, we, it's, a, it's a touchy topic, but it's definitely there. You know what I'm talking about. But they go on, and it happens again. Like, George mentioned it again at the second on my item up for bids. And Drew kind of makes an offhanded comment about, watch out now, James might end up forgetting his pants. Well, the show continues on as normal, and then the sixth item up for bids, I want to say it was a pair of outdoor chairs, and James is modeling, and lo and behold, he's just there in his boxers. And Drew's reaction makes it absolutely worthwhile he is just keeling over laughing because clearly he did not know that it was going to happen probably the same kind of reaction when they flipped cover up around a couple years ago and had the faces of drew do you think that they went too far trying to force the joke or do you feel that them doing that and getting the reaction that they wanted out of drew and george and kind of like an unscripted interweaving of conversation among the three of them made for great television i think it went off pretty smoothly i mean i think the specific moments that drew and george mentioned they were so brief in comparison to the rest of the show that i kind of forgot about them and when you actually saw the pantsless moment i thought it was a nice funny spontaneous moment like some of the past spontaneous moments we've had in the drew era and the bob era so i see no problem with it i enjoyed it you could see it. You could see it two different ways here. If you're someone who believes in family-friendly show, this is totally a whole lot of problems because that th- violates the idea of family-friendly. Or <clears throat> in this case, it kind of fits Drew's style a bit, and I don't find there a problem with it. But I mean, there I, wasn't. It, yeah. mm, go ahead. There wasn't really anything inappropriate with it. It wasn't like. They were trying to show off. It was just Tim without his, his underwears. It was just Tim pantless. I think it felt like it was a nice diversion from the regular OE oh, shirtless, regular James talk. I mean, I don't like the notion, perhaps, of family friendly. I feel that there are certainly plenty of times on television, period, as much as people like to be family friendly, where... They'll make references to things that clearly not everyone in a family would get. And this is something that's gone on for, you know, since the beginning of time. So, I mean, if we we're going to look for family friendly stuff. I don't think trying to point that out as in a, you know, as a as why you have a problem with it is a valid point, in my opinion. Uh, as soon as Drew mentioned the the pants is that he might forget his pants i said i i bet i bet he's gonna show up without his pants on and lo and behold that's exactly what happened i found it funny i apparently see some people not in this call but some people who have not found it funny but i'm like listen it's supposed to be a fun show and i think for all of the editing and hacking that they've been doing the last five years that we've had a problem with i think it's great that they've been leaving some moments in like on the following episode on Friday, man, we like, it's hitting the face and we didn't really even notice it the first time we watched the show. And on, I think it was Monday's episode. They only have two models. They have Amber model item in the contestants row, then have the game. That's a two prize and magic number. And the next thing you know, the doors are open and you see Amber just, you know, running over there as fast as she possibly can. And that was pretty funny too, in my opinion. So I appreciate you know, in the past where they might not have left moments in, like, you know, uh, whatever that guy driving Florence Henderson driving into the door during Lucky Seven, they they cut that out. 
maybe nowadays they might be willing to leave stuff in. The only problem I really I thought it was hilarious. I didn't I thought it was annoying at first with like the first two items up for bid. I was like, okay, we get it. Because part of me wants them I feel like whenever they have James on the show, that's all they talk about with James. James doesn't have much of a personality on the show apart from his accent and from the fact that women like to see him without a shirt on. I wish they did more with him. I feel like that they objectify him more so than the female models. But come at the end, I thought that was a nice tie around. And I like that they waited. I like that they waited until near the end of the show for Drew to forget about it. And then they have James without his pants. It's a very nice little reward. I don't know if that was the way to go about it. Like I said, I want them to do more with James. That gag only works with a male model. There's no way that you would see Rachel or Gwen or what have you doing something like that. And I feel like it's just pandering. I know The Price is Right is always pandered towards a female audience. It's about shopping, and it came out in the 50s and then the 70s. It's always gone for that female demographic but i feel like they're being less subtle about it with having james on the show and i feel like especially years back when they had the whole family vibe i don't get the vibe that james is part of the family i get the vibe that james is just like the next door neighbor pool boy that they invite around when they want to have something nice to look at which is a shame and i just i wish they would do more with him i enjoyed the moment and I got a little bit of character. It shows that James has a more joking side. I just wish that they would expand upon his role on the show in a way. Yeah, I don't know what it is because I like James, but I feel I feel like it, it, maybe it's something he has to do more because I didn't feel this way about Rob. I really liked Rob on the show. I thought he was a good fit. He definitely fit in well like a puzzle piece with the rest of the models and Drew and George. And even Daniel Goddard, who, you know, wasn't even like a regular regular, but was on enough in like season 41 that he was like a semi-regular. Uh, he, he also felt a little bit like a part of the family. And I feel like there's a little disconnect with James somewhere. Like, whereas... Rob would just Rob would love going to work or Rob would love going to do this thing. James just seems like he's just going to work just to work, which is funny because I actually feel the opposite. I, I was bored by Rob on the show. I kind of felt like that Rob was going through the motions much more than James is because I don't remember Rob being involved in sketches like this. The, the I mean, most well, I ever saw of Rob was the April Fool special where, where the models took over. I feel like James started out a lot stiffer on the show. He's gotten a lot better. I think he's just I more think, comfortable in the that. role. Agreed. So I feel like if they're going to keep – because I feel like James has been on the show for a longer period of time than Rob has at this point. Rob wasn't on right. that long. But like I feel a year? like yeah. So I feel like if, if he's gonna continue to be on the show, and don't get me wrong, I, I don't want to lose any more models, keep him on the show, that's fine. I just hope that they give him more to do than just being eye candy. That's that's all I hope. Again, it's it's kind of a sensitive topic in a way, because I don't want it to become sexist talk. But again, leave a comment, let us know what you think about that moment, and if you feel that you enjoyed it or if it's just not a direction. You want to see them go. I just want to mention, Rob was there a year and a half. James has been there about the same amount of time. Yeah. yeah. So let's hope that no there. soap operas pick up, pick him up at all. Anything. Right? <laughs> but now we talk about all the stuff that's coming in the future, as opposed to coming in the past, which makes no sense. We're going to start or going. off. Or going. Or going. <laughs> May 6th, this upcoming Friday, the Mother's Day special. We don't know anything. All we know is that it's happening. They've released a 20-second teaser. We don't know anything, any games, any prizes. Oh, no, we know an SUV. An SUV yeah. is coming. We it's know expectant mothers. Expectant special mothers. So couples show in a way, kind of, sort of. <laughs> Depending on your stance on that, we're not going to debate that on this show. But expectant mothers as opposed to having pairs. And I'm okay with that because we've had a lot of pairs shows this season. And we've had expectant Mother's specials before outside of Mother's Day. So yeah, lumping those together, just like they lumped together the kids' show and Christmas Eve, I'm going to say that that's fine. Good way to do that. 
So that's all we know about the Mother's Day special. We'll have more to talk about that once it happens next week or at the end of this week. Now we know about the Let's Make a Deal, The Price is Right crossover week that's happening the week after that, May 9th to May 13th. We know that there's going to be some Price is Right pricing games played on Let's Make a Deal. We know Hole in One, Punch a Bunch, and Cliffhangers will be played. But we also know some Let's Make a Deal games are going to be played on The Price is Right, namely Smash for Cash, Gold Rush, and Car Pong. Now, the question that I have is, do you feel that having these games, which don't have very much to do with pricing, are a good fit to have on the show? Or do you think they're going to tweak the rules a little bit to make them pricing games? I think the best analogy I can give to this is on our friend Big John's game of Price is Right. He made a pricing game, quote unquote, called Moving On Up, which is just picking numbers and cash and not paying to lose. The thing is, it's a fun game, but it's not necessarily a fun pricing game. It's just a separate piece of enjoyment. And what I wonder is, with the mashup, are they just going to... Are, is it just going to be a total mashup, or are they going to incorporate some pricing into it? Because I think that's going to make a key difference. I guess I would have to get to know a little bit more about the direction they were going in to see if I felt that incorporating the pricing element would make it work. Uh, if you look at the uh, promo for the special uh, for the week, uh, you can see Smash for Cash with the piggy banks with Jonathan standing behind it on the show. And in front of the piggy banks are grocery products. Those are not present on Let's Make a Deal. So I think it's clear, at least for that game, and I'm pretty sure probably for the others, that they're going to make them, uh, they're going to add pricing elements to the games to make them fit on the prices right. And that's interesting to me because there are games on the show now where the primary focus of the game is not pricing. The two that come to mind right away in my head are Secret X, where the only reason the pricing exists is to get another X, or Let Em Roll, which the creators of which, and Roger Dobkowitz, former producer of the show and all this stuff, have said flat out that the pricing aspect of Let Em Roll is tangential at best because the focus of the game is rolling the cubes, which isn't pricing at all. So having a game like this where it doesn't have a lot to do with pricing, I don't see it as that far of a stretch compared to things that they've done in the past. I think the phone home game that they had back in the 80s is a bigger stretch of what's quote-unquote allowed on the show, having someone play from home and having to split a prize for arguably not doing very much than this is. So I don't have a problem with it compared to some. Yeah, I mean, I think it, I mean, I, it definitely could work. I just didn't really know the direction they were going in, and JJ gave a big hint to the direction. If that's the direction, then I like it. But, but what I wonder is, are they going to remove the pricing elements from the pricing games on Let's Make a Deal? Are yes. they going to have one, one just be golf? Because I don't when, know if that's as interesting. One of the games that we do know that's getting played on Let's Make a Deal, um, Cliffhangers, it doesn't look like they have grocery products. It's You have Rachel in front of the contestant, and she has a thing of numbers. And I suspect how this works is it'll be like the slot game where you have a bunch of cards, and you pick one to see how far up you're going to go up the ladder. And you see on the board that there's a yellow strip. And I wonder if you have to get between that to get the prize. That was my thought, and I completely forgot about the slot game. That's ex I think that's exactly what it's going to be like. I don't think it's that big of an issue that as long as they conform to price standards that it's fair game. As long as they conform to deal standards, it should be fair game. See, the problem with them, that is it... what's price standards and deal standards? If they do it on the show, boom, it's standard. That's not what we think. If they <laughs> think it's good for the show, it meets their standards. <laughs> I mean, the standards, I think, have to be, you know, listen, the price is right. It's not going to offer you a prize not to play your game. Let's make a deal, Will, and let's make a deal formats their games around that sometimes. But besides perhaps bailout games on the price is right where you might win just cash, price is very straightforward. Let's make a deal, listen. And so a game like Carpong, 
isn't that straightforward. Whereas, you know, they'll be like, okay, well, you can get an extra, you know, 10 seconds to help your chances of winning the car, or you could do this, or you can do that. And, and so those are what I think of as standards of let's make a deal. Whereas price is like, okay, you have, you know, six grocery products here. You've got four of them to find and I'll give you $10,000 and that's it. Or you can bail after you find the third one and then that's it. I feel like there's a, there is a difference between the two shows. And I think that's what makes them, well, that's what I find to be standards in each of them is how they present themselves. When I meant um, standards for price, I'm using the 72 line that playing for smart shoppers that, Prizes for smart shoppers mm-hmm. theory. That was also almost forty five years ago. I'm aware of that. I'm just that saying that fur coats were okay. That's I'm back a- when smart. That's back when shoppers were smart. Right. Mm-hmm. 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 But yep. the but the idea hasn't changed. We're still pricing items and still coming up with coming up with ways to win games at the same time. So that was I a terrible. Think- change though i kind of think the idea has changed because i think nowadays the pricing is being incorporated with these various either lock elements or set elements or touchscreen elements so i think the standard has changed i actually don't if only because it's not a lot of games like that out there i mean remember roger dobquist was you know with the show from the beginning he was like the executive producer since the late 80s and he was very old school and so there weren't a lot of luck based games uh that he that they had in the rotation and there are still a lot of games where it's pretty much if you know the price of this you will win that still exists any number going into grocery product games bullseye checkout checkout especially are just tell uh, tell us the price of this and then you can win. Grocery game, all all of these small uh, grocery product games are pretty much trying to award people who think they know what stuff costs. And listen, I mean, maybe there aren't smart shoppers out there, but people still have to go get their food. That's one thing that has not changed in the last 45 years. People still shop. So, and even for Four prize games, two prize games, single prize games that aren't played for trips, but, you know, the computers, the televisions, the grills, people do need stuff like that. And people do see stuff like that when they might go to Walmart or Best Buy or Target or wherever. So I don't think it's changed because people still do have to shop. It, it's something that has to happen. You have to go do it. For those of them listening who don't really watch Let's Make a Deal, myself kind of included. Should we briefly mention the I, the object of each of the three games so they know what to expect? Please, I, would, you... I, I would if I knew what they were. I would please ask because I don't know them either. I have, so. a, I, I have a list. I have, and I'll, I will uh, leave it for JJ's you. JJ's the only one at. of us that watches Let's Make a Deal, apparently. <laughs> I mean, I'm just joins in, I'm sure, at some point, too. Uh, so we'll start off with Gold Rush and Stick, since that's like the first one I see. Um, it's four car, and there are eight boxes on the Let's Make a Deal stage. Of the eight boxes, six of them have pieces of gold, two of them have dynamite, and those represent Zonks. Mm-hmm. And so each time a contestant picks a piece of gold, they move up uh, each level, and there are five levels, and each level has cash on it. So every time they move up, they have the option to take the cash that they have now or continue on. If they find dynamite, they have to go back to the beginning. They have to they drop all the way down to the starting level. If they find an awful lot like past the buck. So, well, the, the, the interesting part is if you get pretty up, pretty high up and then you find a piece of dynamite, it might be difficult to get back up. And if you find both of them, then the game's over. But that's how Gold Rush works. I see that very similar to Pass the Buck. Maybe that's just a game that they're replacing it with. So yeah, I mean that's fine. So, and I imagine the grocery product or small price, a small product aspect would be maybe how many chances you get. Perhaps I'm interested to see how that works. Uh, in Car Pong, uh, you it's 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 throwing balls into cups, trying to throw balls into cups. There are cups. There's a cup in the middle that says car. There are cups around the cup that says car that are cash. And you have about uh, five seconds to throw as many balls as you can into the cups and try to get the uh, 
try to get the, the car to get one cup men. filled in. However, you can earn 15 extra seconds on Let's Make a Deal by answering pop culture questions. Um, and uh, that's how that works pretty much. It's how many can you get in in perhaps 5 to 20 seconds. Well, that seems like an easy shift over. Instead of having a pop culture question, do you know the price of this saw? Like I said, I don't even that. I think you know you can pretty much just take. I would love to just do car pong and to figure out how many extra seconds the contestant gets. Here, let's just roll out the let them roll prop. Is <laughs> the price of this axe mouthwash is five fourteen? Do you think the price of this cereal is more or less? And then you have a chance at the end to win the super pong ball, <laughs> which will triple your winnings. Rest in peace, super ball. Never forget. And the other one is Smash for Smash Cash. For cash. There are piggy banks numbered 1 through 10. If they don't make an any number reference, I'm going to be disappointed. And <laughs> they have to, I think it, it says that they have to choose a piggy bank containing an amount of cash. And then after that, the cash is like $1 to $3 in the rest of the piggy banks. And then two of them have a zonk. They have to... Uh, continue to earn cash to go up certain money plateaus they say money plateaus <laughs> so you get for for three dollars you get a thousand dollars you get a thousand dollar plateau for five dollars you get two thousand dollar plateau eight dollars you get to the three thousand dollar plateau eleven dollars you get to the five thousand dollar plateau and then if you get fifteen dollars you get to the twenty thousand dollar plateau and uh, you can quit once you smash a Zonk card with the money that you've earned, whatever plateau you've gotten to, and if you find both of them, then you lose everything you have. Can I ask a question? Exactly what would they do in place of a Zonk? Because I don't get the sense Zonks really fit in this game. Um, in the, the, way price, that I, right, yeah. the way that I saw it when we saw this is that since we know there's grocery products, I'm assuming if it's going to be something like Grand Game where we have these grocery products, there's a certain limit of how high the target price is, and you have to smash the piggy banks that are below the actual price to get those dollar bills. So then each grocery, each piggy bank is going to be indic- represented by a grocery product. Yes. Yes. That, that'll work. That's fine. And maybe just like a lose everything. I mean, there's lose everything in games. Mm-hmm. There's zeros. <laughs> One other thing um, that I think is worth mentioning, Jordan mentioned this uh, at the top of this segment that we're talking about. Moving on up is not just a Big John creation. Moving on up is a game from Let's Make a Deal. You know, Big John has placed a Let's Make a Deal game in to the prices, right? So technically, Fremantle probably owes him a little, little side change. Like, oh, thanks for the idea. <laughs> but it brings up the point that I really, really now hope that they play Moving On Up on the real show, <laughs> on the prices, right? Anyway, that is all we have to say about the Let's Make a Deal port uh, special of specials in that week now we move on to the nighttime specials they finally released a whole bunch of promotional stills we know a lot more about the nighttime specials again that's going to be may 23rd 24th and 25th we now know that the contestants are going to be paired up in some places i think they're going to be in threes on the amazing Mm -hmm. race one but it's going to be some sort of contestant i I hate the phrase reality star because that makes me feel dirty (laughs) saying that but some sort of former (laughs) contestant on survivor amazing race big brother what have you coupled with a contestant from the studio audience is that really needed like having the hosts there isn't that enough do we really need to have these in most cases losers of other game shows getting another chance to win something uh, I actually wouldn't mind if the, if the former contestants were just the players. I actually think that could work interestingly, but the pair concept seems a little bit weird to me. I, I kind of like the idea of making them the contestants, but then you've got to like fill the audience full of people, and I think you'd probably have to get everybody who's ever appeared on any of those shows over the course of their entire history to get 300 of those people (laughs) in the audience because otherwise you're going to have regular audience members in with the people who are going to be called down and that just doesn't seem fair like welcome to the show you're here just to watch we're going to be calling down these specific people and they'll know in advance the question (laughs) that i have is are they each going to win the prize, or are they going to split them? We don't know. Or, or is there going to be a charity element like they, like there has been 
for the real celebrity specials. Maybe it'll be a cherry. I don't think they're gonna split everything. You've won a wave runner, and now we need to split it. Somebody bring mm-hmm. out the song. Let's bifurcate this thing. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, some of these people have won a million dollars or half a million dollars, so it's not like they need more money. <laughs> what makes this even much different than the celebrity specials, where the celebrity, even though it's only one of them, is basically doing the same exact thing? Um, yeah. I'm pretty sure that Nene Leakes was not in contestants' row. I understand that, but the point well, is... That's your question! <laughs> you asked what's different. I told you what's different. <laughs> but I mean, our attitude towards it. I mean, we don't complain. We don't complain when these celebrity specials occur that we have a celebrity playing along with them. It Why? depends on the celebrity. Do we, do we though? I think we kind of do. Depending on the celebrity. I don't celebrity. think. Cough, I don't cough. Think do. Jenny McCarthy. Right. Cough, I cough. Think, I think it depends on the celebrity, but we really <laughs> don't. I I agree with that. And continue. Do you think that part of it could be that because it's nighttime and it's not just a regular old show? That. I, th- I think that's it too. They want to give like people it really involved all the way around. I, I mean, mean, for whatever reason, May CBS is really apt on crossing over as many of their properties as possible. So that's just a network decision. I mean, let's make a deal week the nighttime specials with the crossovers of the reality shows. It's been a pretty heavy crossover year because not only do you have Let's Make a Deal Week, uh, Scorpion crossed over with The Price is Right. Yes. Uh, I think I think there was an NCIS crossover with uh, NCIS New Orleans. There was a Flash crossover with Supergirl. Uh, so they've been very crossover heavy this entire year. I mean, it makes sense for May because it's sweeps month and you want to grab those people. Still, the thing with me, though, and like, I'm really happy that they're back in primetime for the first time in like eight, nine years. And I, I'm very excited to see what they're going to do. I'm just a little skeptical that they're basing it around these three properties. I understand that they're, you know, still kind of popular, but they're definitely nowhere near as big as they were in their heydays. And it's just an somewhat odd decision for me i'm rooting for the rooting the for the best uh but i'm not my expectations for in terms of ratings aren't that high are we gonna have two three people that can potentially give a decision as to the pricing games or the one bids or what have you or are they just going to be like random accessories essentially human props to the actual contestants Especially, I'm thinking showcase in particular. Now the showcase is interesting. I think for the games, I think it's going to be like the celebrity specials, where they will sit and consult uh, with themselves and the audience, and they'll make a decision, come together to make a decision. As of the showcases, I don't know how those are going to play out. I think they maybe just have the contestants up there, maybe have the uh, other reality people uh, involved in the showcase in some way. For the Big Brother one, well, I hope they have those stars on like a couch next to the uh, showcase podium. For the would... big, for the Big Brother one, I hope they do every room in the house. Uh, let's just hope that for the Survivor one, they don't vote someone out of the showcase or vote a prize <laughs> out of the showcase. Oh gosh, Jay, I didn't even think about that, and they're clearly not <laughs> above that given the college rival special. Jordan, <laughs> <laughs> what have I done? Well, we'll have to see when that happens. The other thing we know. I'm not going to give this a spoiler warning because the show has officially announced it, but we mentioned on a prior episode that they repainted It's in the Bag for these specials. We now know that It's in the Bag is not the only game to get a repaint. We also know Pushover and Punch-A-Bunch have received repaints as well. Interestingly, all of the repaints seem to have a similar color palette, which is primarily blue and yellow with touches of orange thrown throughout, and they all have the same. And... What they've also done is given Punch-A-Bunch a new distribution of its prize slips. Still only one slip for (laughs) $25,000. They can't even up that for a nighttime special. But now there's four $10,000s and other stuff. But it also has, like, the Survivor logo on it. So do you think that these repaints and or the Punch-A-Bunch distribution are going to be permanent? Or do you feel that they're just going to grab the buckets of Sherwin-Williams and redo them after the specials have been taped. Did 
are we sponsored by Sherwin Williams now? <laughs> that was <laughs> the first paint company I could think of to try and change up what I was saying. <laughs> I, I just thought there was a probably sponsorship. But anyway, back to back to context. Something about this feels one off to me. Maybe it's the fact that for some reason I think this color palette fits fairly well with a primetime set. I have a weird feeling it's one off, but then but then my question is if that if that's the case, why one off? Why why repaint just for one plane? Doesn't that seem like too much work? I would couple that by saying, look what they did back on one of the April Fool's shows when they decided, you know what would be a good idea? We're going to take a whole bunch of old carpet and just kind of staple it to range game. So they're clearly not above changing the set of a game for just, you know, one episode. They changed Now or Then to Now and Then for Decades Week and then forgot to change the title for its next play, which is why they had to awkwardly edit that out via camera work. But still, so I, I hope that some of them, I don't get why they redid It's in the Bag. It's not that different. Pushover looks fantastic in its new color palette, even if it does kind of blend into the turntable a little bit. And the punch a bunch, I don't really get why they changed because I don't get why they changed the colors because when I think of Survivor or the Amazing Race or any of that stuff, I don't think, you know, blue or yellow. I don't know if anyone on the set has synesthesia and thought that that would be necessary (laughs) because when they think CBS, they think blue and yellow for whatever reason. (laughs) I I don't know. Like I said, they changed squeeze play to blue, but that is still blue. That wasn't just a decades week change. The punch a bunch that has survivor punch slips and the survivor logo on the distribution board. So I think it's clear that if anything does change, those will change. Um, I think depending on when these specials were taped, which I thought was like, you know, March, uh, I think that these perhaps may be one off changes, if only because the season finished taping in the beginning of April. So perhaps they change these games to this don't have plans to play these games in the rest of the tapings that they have and then they'll repaint the games back or you know change them subsequently back to a price friendly maybe color or they'll take the you know the survivor stuff off a bunch a bunch in time for the season 45 tapings to begin in july I personally like the uh, bunch of bunch colors that they have at the moment for that for that special because I think they should, uh, aside of taking down the survivor stuff, should leave it like that because I think it just looks better yeah, personally color wise. I'll be honest. I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing all of them stick around. I think they all do look great. Punch a bunch. I, I like punch a bunch because it's warm. Punch a bunch has a now a very warm feeling. Felt rather uh, cold with its pink colors you just like it because it's it kind of invocates the old punch board color palette Mm. which was blue Mm. and yellow and orange i no, that is that is not why i like it i don't know if i've ever said this i have never liked that said oh well i have to agree with them i didn't that's (laughs) not my reasoning either i just think it looks better than the pink one they've got now we'll have to debate the merits of what pricing games have ugly sets in another episode well you know they say there's a first time for everything and this is the first time we've not been able to complete our game in the appointed time. So we will continue this incredible run of spins on Monday's program as Michael Larson continues to press his luck. Thanks for tuning in to Contestants Not Appearing on Stage, part of the Torgo Entertainment Network. For more episodes of Contestants Not Appearing on Stage, check us out on YouTube or online at cnaoscast.net.